When it comes to the great sport of tennis, no shot is more important than the serve. In singles, 50% of all the points that you play will start with your serve. And that's why it's fundamental that you master these five elements. Hey everyone, Coach Simon here with Top Tennis Training and let's get stuck in right away. So element number one is the way we hold the racket, which is the grip. Now for the serve, we recommend using the continental grip. This grip will allow you to hit the slice serve, the flat serve, and that kick serve, all using the same grip. It's also very important for the pronation and supination to occur. And that's why the continental grip is the first element that you must master. So now that we have the grip, it's all about the way that we position our feet, the stance. There are three main serve stances that we can use. There is the platform stance where the feet are around shoulder width apart and you keep them in that position until you actually drive up to the point of contact. Then we have the pinpoint, which is where your feet start apart and during the motion, you bring your feet together and then you drive from there. And finally, we have the hybrid, which is in between the pinpoint and the platform. Now, when you're just learning the surf, it's a very good idea to use the platform stands because you have that wide base. Now normally, your feet are around shoulder width apart and this allows you to feel very balanced. You can use both legs for that balance during the motion. And that's why the platform stance when you're learning the serve is a great way to start. Now how should you position your feet? Ideally, you want to be side on when you're hitting a tennis serve. Now before we get to the next element of the serve, make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on that notification bell. And that means having both feet in line with the baseline. So my toes are facing the right side of the court if I'm a right-handed player. Some players will have it a little bit more open, so your left foot might face the right net post. But in general, you want to have more of a turn with your upper body, and that's why having the feet in this position will help you to get that coil with the upper body. The next element is something that most players will struggle with at some point during their tennis journey, and that is the way that we toss the ball when we hit the serve. Now the biggest issue I see with players is an inconsistent ball toss. It goes too far to the right sometimes, too far to the left, sometimes it goes too far behind their body. And in general, that tends to happen because the players toss the ball too high, or they hold the ball in the palm of their hands, which causes the ball to roll out of the hands, and it's very hard to actually feel what the ball is doing as it leaves your hand when it's in the palm. So what's worked for me and my students has always been to hold the ball in your fingers. This makes it much easier to actually place that ball in the right spot time and time again. It also helps you to reduce the amount of spin. Now when I hold it in the palm, the ball leaves the palm and some spin is produced. But when I hold it in the fingers, what happens is I can place that ball with very little spin actually being produced. The ball isn't rotating very much, so it's very easy for me to actually control that ball toss. Now, how high should you toss the ball? Ideally, you want to toss the ball just to around the point of contact. So if I'm going to make contact here, there's no point in me tossing the ball way up there and letting the ball travel down, build up speed, and making it much harder for me to then time. If you think about a stationary object, let's say you're hitting a forehand and the coach drop feeds you the ball on the spot. It's very easy to have perfect technique and time that ball out in front because the ball isn't moving. Now think about facing someone who's hitting very powerful shots and trying to time that forehand. It's much, much harder. So the higher you toss the ball, the faster the ball starts to travel when you're trying to make contact it then becomes much harder to time that ball in the sweet spot and hit it in the same zone time and time again. Now, if I toss the ball just to around that point of contact, what happens is the ball travels up, it hits the apex, it stops for a few milliseconds, and then it starts to travel down. 
And if I can time myself well and hit the ball close to that apex, it's like I'm hitting a stationary object as opposed to hitting one that's traveling down with some speed. So think about the ball toss as placing the ball as opposed to throwing the ball. When we tend to throw it, we throw it with some speed. We start to go faster with that tossing hand. Whereas if I think about placing the ball, I'm placing it on the spot. That means I go slower, I go more methodical, and I don't think about throwing it quite as high. So I'm placing the ball, and this allows me to then get that timing where I can hit it at the apex. Something else that's very important is where we place the ball in relation to the baseline. Now, a lot of players toss the ball so that if the ball was to land, it would land somewhere on the baseline or slightly behind them. Now, this is okay for a kick serve when you're learning that upward swing motion, but for the first serve or the slice serve, you want to toss the ball slightly inside the baseline. And that allows me to then get my body weight behind the serve and produce a more powerful, aggressive shot. The next element to master is the motion with the arm and the racket. So when you start your serve, ideally you want to start somewhere around this position. You can start slightly higher if you have an abbreviated take back. But in general, most players will start with their tossing arm and the racket head together in this kind of position here. And then the racket starts to have its swing. So the arms separate, the tossing arm comes up and the hitting arm then gets into the power position. So there's different ways to reach this power position. We can have the racket drop like Federer, like Sampras, like Novak Djokovic. They all start around this position. They have the racket drop behind their back leg. And from there, they lift the racket into that power position. Now you can also have an abbreviated swing, which is something that we see with Carlos Alcaraz or Rafa Nadal. Now, if you want more help with your serve, we have a free serve guide that you can download right away. I'll leave the link beneath this video. They start off like this and Alcaraz goes from this position into this position very quickly. So play around with both, experiment with the racket drop, experiment with the abbreviated take back and see which one suits your serve more. However you reach that power position, it's important that we get to a position similar to this. We don't have to stop there, but we at least pass through that position. Now, if you think about throwing a tennis ball, you would reach a position similar to this. The throwing arm would be bent to about a 90 degree angle. From this position, the left arm is up. And from here, I'm now releasing the shoulders. I'm rotating with the upper body. I'm rotating with my hips and I would throw the ball. And that's a very similar concept to the serve. We're throwing the racket into that ball to produce power and biomechanically it allows us to hit with speed on a consistent basis without injuring ourselves. Now the easiest way to find that trophy or power position is to put both arms out like this, bend your hitting arm until it's about a 90 degree angle, drop your back shoulder and lift the left shoulder. So this is for the right handers out there. Now in this position I can also manipulate the way my hand is positioned. Some players like Federer or Sampras will have the hand like this, so the strings are very much in a neutral position. Other players like Carlos Alcaraz or Goran Ivanisevic, they would turn the palm towards their head. And this allows them to have more supination, as we'll see in just a little bit. But the main idea behind that power or trophy position is to reach that position as if we were going to throw a tennis ball. The main difference of course being between throwing a ball and hitting the serve is when we throw a ball our shoulders tend to be level like this and we tend to put the energy forwards. On the serve we want to have our energy going up to the point of contact so we want the shoulders to tilt like this. So instead of being in that position I want my shoulders to be in that position. This allows me to then have all my energy 
being directed towards my target, which is the contact point. Many players think about on the serve, they have to direct the energy towards the service box. But biomechanically, if you do everything correct, you then have all the energy going up to the point of contact. And if you're using that continental grip, this then translates into the ball going into the service box. So you don't have to worry about the service box, you have to worry about that point of contact. From this power position, what happens next is we have the racket drop. So the racket drops down, and the more flexible your shoulder is, the more of a racket drop you will get. Now, if your shoulder's quite stiff, if it's quite tight, if you do a lot of weights, you won't have much range of motion in this racket drop phase. So it's something that you can also work on and improve, increasing the range of motion so you have more of a racket drop. Now, from the racket drop, what happens is the racket head tends to go on edge when we drop the racket down. From this position, as you can see now, the racket leads with this side of the racket towards that ball. So it's almost as if I'm going to hit the ball with the side of my racket, with my frame. From this position, I now start to turn the palm and the racket opens towards that point of contact. So it's very important that we understand this technically so that we can master it. This all relates to supination and pronation. So what exactly is supination and pronation on the tennis serve? Now, if we take the racket out of play, we just focus on the arm and especially the forearm. Now, when I place my palm like this, so my wrist is neutral, my palm is facing my body, now my forearm is in a neutral position. If I turn my palm to the sky, now I'm in a supinated position. And if I start to turn my palm back towards my body, I'm pronating back into a neutral position. And finally, if I turn my palm to the ground, I'm now pronating fully. Now on the surf, prior to contact, the racket will be on edge. We're in that supinated position. This is where the forearm is now facing my head. Now, as I go up to the point of contact, I'm pronating into a neutral position. So pronating into the point of contact, and after contact, my palm now starts to turn towards the right side of the court. I've pronated fully. So supination, neutral, full pronation. And it's very important that we master this skill because it's like throwing a tennis ball. If I was going to throw a tennis ball, I wouldn't throw the ball by snapping my wrist. I'd release it with the forearm just like that. The same mechanics on the serve. Supination, pronation, full pronation. Now I've heard some coaches teach you to snap the wrist. If you want to injure your wrist, your elbow or your shoulder, then this is one of the best ways to do it. Think about doing this at high speeds. You're snapping the wrist. It's a very bad way to throw a tennis ball. I wouldn't throw a tennis ball like this. But on top of that, I'm also holding a 300 gram racket and I'm trying to do this at high speeds. Think of the amount of stress on my wrist. So try to avoid snapping the wrist. It's the snap of the forearm that gives us the power. And it's also very important that we master this to stay injury free. If I'm constantly snapping the wrist, that's when injuries can happen. If I'm releasing the arm, especially the forearm, the upper arm, and the shoulder muscles, that internal and external rotation, this is what allows me to produce power, to produce a lot of racket head speed in a safe way for my body. And finally, we bend the elbow and have the racket come down to our left pocket. Bending the elbow and finishing down by your left hip is technically the easiest way on the body to slow down that acceleration that we've produced throughout the motion and stay injury free. That's why most pros finish down by their left hip. If you were to finish on the right side of the body, you could see how injuries can happen. So relaxing after we actually hit the ball. And the fifth element that we want to master on the serve is our tactical intentions with the serve and the first shot and actually anticipating that the return is coming back. Very often players will hit the serve, 
they think they've hit a really good serve and they admire it. They're like, wow, I hit a really good serve there. And before they know it, the return is already coming back in their feet and they get caught off guard. That's one of the tactics that Djokovic does against the big servers. When you're landing off the serve, that's when the players can really expose you if you're not quick at landing and then getting into that split step. Now the serve plus one is basically having a plan prior to you actually hitting that serve. So when I step up to the line, when I'm bouncing the ball, I already have a plan in my head. I'm serving out wide, I'm going into the space. That's one serve plus one pattern that we can use. So have a plan prior to actually hitting the serve. There's no point in stepping up to the line, hitting that serve, hoping that it goes somewhere good and hoping for some magic to happen. You want to make the magic happen by having that plan of, I'm serving down the tee, the return is most likely coming back to me or to my forehand. And with that first shot, I'm going to hit my forehand into my opponent's backhand, which is their weaker wing. So the serve plus one, work on it and master it. Now the next step is then landing and anticipating a good return. So we don't want to land and just admire the serve. We want to land, normally we'll be inside the court when we land. So we're landing, pushing back and getting into a good position, that ready position, ready for that first shot. So a quick recap, element number one is the continental grip. This grip allows you to hit all the various serves and it's very sound for you technically in terms of the throwing mechanics. Number two is the stance, making sure that we're balanced whichever stance we choose to use. Number three is the ball toss, placing the ball instead of throwing it too high and trying to hit it close to that apex. Number four is the motion with the arm and the racket, starting down here, having the racket drop, or having the abbreviated swing. Either way, we reach a good power position. We have the racket drop, then we have the supination and pronation, and finally, the relaxed finish. And element number five is the serve plus one and anticipating a good return. So we're landing and getting ready to receive that first shot. Now, if you've enjoyed this lesson, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, of course, and turn on that notification bell. If there are any lessons you'd like to see from us in the near future, leave a comment down below and we'll film the top suggestions. Signing off, Coach Simon from TTT. All the best and see you soon, guys.